Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video we will discuss the difference between the 2 and the 4 wire technique. So in case you want to figure out the value of this resistor, you have basically two options. You can use two measurement wires to measure the value or you could add two more to have a 4 wire technique. Of course there's also 3 wire technique available, but that's a different topic. So let's dive right into it and figure out what's the difference. To do so we will go with a simple example and for this we will assume we have this cable right here, it's a bus cable and the diameter is 0.8 millimeters which equals to 0.5 millimeter square. Since this is a copper cable we have to incorporate the specific resistance of copper which is actually 0.0171 ohm by millimeter square per meter. So in case we want to figure out what's the resistance of one meter of our cable, we go ahead with 0.0171 ohm millimeter square per meter and multiply it by one meter and divide it by 0.5 millimeter square, the actual cross section area of our cable. If you do the math, you will end up with a result of 0.0342 ohm because all the other units will just eliminate each other. So that's the resistance of one meter of our cable. Of course we're talking only about the resistance of one wire of our cable which consists of four wires in total. With other words our cable has a resistance of 0.0342 ohm per meter. So of course depending on how many meters we go the overall resistance will increase. So let's assume we want to go from point A to point B. The distance in between those two points is about 10 meters. Since circuits need always a closed loop, we have to go from point A to point B and also from point B to point A. This means our cable length is in total 2 times 10 meters, so equals 20 meters. Looking at our resistance, this means for 20 meters we have to multiply our resistance per meter by 20 and we will end up with a resistance of 0.684 ohm for the whole round trip. So let's put all those numbers and theoretical calculations aside and take a look on a use case. Point A will be probably some kind of measurement device, probably a multimeter. Point B in our case will be a resistor and it will be a resistor of 10 ohm. So our goal is to measure the value of this resistor which is 10 ohm. To do so what your multimeter is normally doing it's going to inject a certain measurement current. In our case we assume this current will be 1.5 amps and that's the current which will be injected into the circuit and as a second step the multimeter is measuring the voltage at the same time. So in our case we would expect 15 volts because as you probably all remember the resistance is the voltage divided by the current, in our case 15 divided by 1.5 which will result in 10 ohm. And I want to go one step back at this point. So this 1.5 amps are not coming from nowhere. Those 1.5 amps are injected by your measurement device to have one static size. Because if you look at our equation at the bottom, we have one unknown, which is the resistance. We can measure the voltage, but then we're still missing something else. And that's the current, which is so far a defined constant size of 1.5 amps in our example. So with the preperception that we have 1.5 amps as a stable injection of current, we can do the math or our multimeter can do the math and output us the value of the resistor. So in a perfect world this should be our result. But since our measurement current needs to go the whole way, needs to run through the cable, through the resistor and back through the cable, it's actually seeing some more resistors. One on the way from the multimeter to the resistor and one from the resistor back to the multimeter. And those resistors are not real components. It's basically just the resistance of the cable, which as you remember is 0 0.342 ohms for every 10 meters, so 0 0.684 in total. So before this drawing gets too messy, let's put together a circuit diagram. So we have the resistance of the cable on the way to our actual resistor and on the way back we will have another resistance. And once more let's put down the values right into our circuit diagram. So having this sorted out let's rearrange our circuit diagram a bit to have it a bit more in a technical alignment and take a closer look on what's actually going on. 
So in case we are only using this two wire technique and injecting this measurement current through the same cable which we use to measure the voltage and then calculate the resistance, we are basically measuring the voltage drop over this whole bunch of three resistors. And that's because those 1.5 amps are pushed through the whole circuit, through the cable, through the resistor and back through the cable. That's a serious circuit. And this means this current will create voltage drops through all the resistors it's going through. So what we will measure in reality utilizing the two wire technique is 16.03 volts. Putting this into our calculation, we have to divide those 16.03 volts by those 1.5 amps. Those are still the same because they are pushed through by the measurement device. We will end up with 10.684 ohm that we're actually measuring or that the measurement device is calculating for us. Once we compare this to the actual value of the resistor we are basically trying to measure, we can see a difference of 0 0.684 ohm, which translates to a mistake of 6.84%. And of course you can see from this picture already, if the resistor we try to measure is smaller, this mistake would be much bigger. If the resistor we try to measure would be bigger, this mistake wouldn't be so significant. But on the other hand also, if the cable length would be more than 10 meters, and in reality that's actually the case quite often if you're matching like a factory or an office building, the measurement wires can get quite long. So it's always about the ratio between the resistance of your cable and the resistance you try to measure and that's influencing your relative measurement mistake. So what we actually want to do is we want to measure the voltage drop of only this resistor. So let's clean up a bit and try to do it right. To prevent this mistake, we will introduce two more wires. And that's where we're transitioning from the two wire technique to the four wire technique. In this scenario, those 1.5 amps need to be injected by a separate device. So a separate power supply, which will supply 1.5 amps at a constant level. Our measurement device is now functioning as a voltmeter only. So in case we measure again, we would measure the voltage drop only for this resistor and not for the whole circuit. And this measurement would be exactly 15 volts in theory. So we would end up with those 10 ohm as soon as we divide it by 1.5 amps. So that's basically the difference between the two and the four wire technique. But I think there's a very important point a lot of people skip through once they're explaining the difference between the two and four wire technique. And that's actually that you could argue now you introduced two more lines, two more wires, which will have the exact same resistance again. So those two additional wires will have, of course, the same resistance over those 10 meters going to the resistor and going back. But there's a very specific reason why the resistance of those two extra wires is not coming into account. And to understand this, you just have to remember that the current through this extra wires is actually creating the voltage drop. And since this is a voltmeter and the input resistance of this voltmeter is close to infinite. And an infinite input resistance results in close to zero amps that are flowing or that are pushed through those additional measurement lines. And that's the major difference. We need this defined 1.5 amp measurement current to be able to calculate towards the resistance. But in case we use two wires to supply the resistor with this measurement current of 1.5 amps and we use two more wires to measure the voltage, we don't have any current flowing through those additional measurement lines we're using to measure the voltage drop. And that's the whole clue about the difference. That's the whole clue why the four wire technique is so much more precise. With getting a clean voltage drop measurement only for the resistor and getting this defined current through two separate lines, we are basically totally fine and have clear values to calculate with and so far can measure the resistance precisely. So that's basically all the magic about the two and four wire measurement technique. In case you liked the video, make sure to give a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more topics like this, make sure to let us know in the comments what we should talk about next time. So thanks for watching and see you around.